This is just a quick how-to on how Ballistics Advanced Wind Kit works. Uh, the Advanced Wind Kit allows you to do a lot more with wind than you've ever been able to do with other ballistics applications before. Uh, you can see here I've got a default configuration set up to match JBM. So I've got uh, 294 uh, inches at 1,000 yards uh, reflected by the 3,000 feet per second with a 0.5 BC. Now no wind is currently configured, uh, so I'm going to tap wind here. Now, first I'll show you what most applications do. Uh, if you type in 10 miles an hour, for example, what most apps will give you is just a 0 to 1,000 yard constant wind. Uh, so it assumes that it's constantly 10 miles an hour across your entire 1,000 yards. <clears throat> so here I've typed in 10 miles an hour into the velocity window. Uh, click on the constant switch, uh, which tells Ballistic to assume it's a constant uh, wind. And then I close this. <clears throat> now I end up with 82.6 inches of drift at 1,000 yards, which does match JBM, and it matches similar to what most other applications will give you, but it's not very realistic. Uh, you rarely ever run in a scenario where you get a constant 10 mile an hour wind at 1,000, from 0 to 1,000 yards across your entire range. And so if I tap on wind configuration again, uh, I'm going to take this band here and just pinch it, and you can actually take these and spread them out wherever you want to across your range. Uh, I can even create multiple wind bands here. Let's say there are two different winds coming in and you can delete them by tapping on the little X. So I'm going to start off with a blank slate again and if you just tap it creates a new wind source. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to stretch it across 0,000 like I did last time. Only this time I'm not going to tap the constant switch. I want to leave constant off. What that does is it tells Ballistic that the wind is linear. Uh, so I've got a thousand yard wind source that covers a thousand yards here uh, with the strongest point of that wind source being at the center of the band. So about 500 yards is going to be the strongest uh, point of that wind. It's then going to decay off uh, to both edges of the band. So now what I have is more consistent, more realistic with what a real wind is actually going to do, and it gives me 44 inches uh, at 1,000 yards. Uh, but that's, that's not all you can do with the wind kit. If you go back into the wind kit here, let's say that I really just have a light breeze and it's really close to the muzzle. Uh, so let's say from zero to, you know, almost 400 yards, uh, for example, and we want to leave it a linear wind. <clears throat> let's assume that the wind is coming from the opposite direction, which is fine. We just change the dial over to that that uh, direction. You can actually change this however you like. You can even move your finger off of it if you want, uh, which gives you more fine tuning. So I'm going to set that at minus 90 degrees. And if I close this, the wind band then turns red, which just denotes for the user that it's coming from the opposite direction. It's really just for aesthetics. Um, so now I'm going to close this here. <clears throat> and you can see that my wind coming in now uh, really only affects the projectile at the first 400 yards. And of course, it's still going to continue to drift after that. Um, but now you're only dealing with a 20-inch drift at 1,000 yards. Now, how do you actually visualize this and what's going on? Well, if you scroll down to the wind drift chart, you can actually see what's going on on the chart itself. You can see here a majority of the drift starts off at the first 400 yards or so. Now I'll give you a much better comparison of what's going on by going into the wind kit again. And let's just create a second wind source. So I'll create a new wind source. Um, let's say it's going to be around 550 yards. Uh, and we'll set this one to be about 10 miles an hour. Let's make this a constant wind. Let's just uh, say, uh, for the sake of argument, that uh, we do have an open area at the range and there is uh, quite a gust coming in uh, down, down range. So I'll close this. Uh, now you can see we have two different uh, wind sources coming in. We've got one uh, coming in at the muzzle uh, in one direction, then we've got one coming in uh, close to downrange, um, <clears throat> both at 10 miles an hour. Uh, this one is constant at the top. So I close this. We get our statistics here, uh, and you can see now if you uh, read down the solutions chart that you start off with zero wind, and of course you gradually increase and you get up to 10 inches of drift, and then the second gust comes along later on and <clears throat> ends up landing you back at almost zero where you started out. 
I'll sort of visualize this, uh, scroll down the wind drift chart, and you can see what's actually happening here now, is you have a certain amount of drift, and then once your projectile hits that large gust of wind near downrange, it actually drifts right on back. Now I'm going to go back <clears throat> to the wind configuration, and let's create a third type of wind here. Uh, if I just tap and stretch a little bit, and let's say we have an upwind down at the target. Uh, most, uh, most of the target pullers at these targets are sitting in pits or standing in pits, and there is kind of a drop-off at a lot of these ranges, so it's possible you could have a, a bit of an updraft. Uh, so I've created here <clears throat> a wind source at about 850 yards, and let's say that there is just a, a two-mile-an-hour upwind, um, no real horizontal wind, and let's call it constant. Now you'll see here that the wind source is actually going to change to yellow, which denotes that you have an upwind. And you can actually see that two miles an hour as part of the description. So you've got an upwind at the end of the range. Let's say you've got this constant wind burst uh, down here somewhere. And you can overlap winds if you want to. Uh, I recommend for the best accuracy leaving the winds independent of each other. Um, but it will blend winds if you tell it to. And then you've got a wind down at the muzzle. Now, this upwind isn't going to affect the windage at all. Uh, what it's going to do is it's going to affect, ultimately, your elevation when you get to 1,000 yards. So instead of 294 inches, for example, uh, you actually lose a half an inch about at 1,000 yards with that 2 mile an hour upwind. So now you're, you've gone from 294.6 to 294.0. This is a very light upwind, but it does affect you uh, about a half an inch at 1,000 yards. Now, if we take a look at the wind drift chart, we get the same thing because the horizontal winds are the only ones that are going to actually impact your, uh, your wind drift. Now I'll show you one last thing. Uh, there, I've shown you a couple of different types of wind you can create. Uh, you can create a constant wind and a linear wind by flipping the switch here that I've shown you. Uh, there is one other type of wind source that you can create, and that is just by tapping and not stretching at all. You actually create a linear wind, but you're able to mark the strongest source of that wind at whatever distance you like. <clears throat> so let's say I just tap, and you see here it shows 728 yards. It doesn't show a range, like when you pinch. So what this does is this will create a wind source that is linearized across the entire distance from 0 to 1,000 yards, but you're able to mark the strongest uh, portion of that wind, the strongest gust of that wind, where it's actually going to hit that 10 miles an hour, whatever you specify, uh, at whatever distance you've got this set to. So you can see here I've got, you know, 700 and some odd yards, 790 yards, 10 miles an hour. It's going to linearize all the way back to zero yards and all the way up to 1,000 yards, but that's going to be the strongest point from where it begins to decay that wind from. Uh, so that, that too, uh, depending on your wind conditions, um, <clears throat> can give you much more accurate uh, windage output than just a traditional constant wind across that entire range. Uh, and I'll show you here on the wind drift chart what that looks like now. So again, you do have a, a fair amount of uh, play in the advanced wind configuration to create anything you like. Um, now that you know how they work, you can create more accurate wind scenarios than just your, your typical uh, type of application. And um, most importantly, uh, you know, verify what you put in with what actual output you're getting. Uh, you want to take a little practice with this and find out exactly uh, whether or not the wind is, at, is actually matching uh, what you're getting out of ballistic. It will help you eventually to create better wind input so that you get better wind output. Um, I would first advise you to try what just these standard applications are giving you for constant winds, and you'll see that that 80-something uh, that inches doesn't really make a whole lot of sense compared to what real-world scenarios you're experiencing. Um, this wind drift chart right here shows you've got a pretty significant drift there, uh, and most people just don't experience that at the range. So <clears throat> that's how the wind, the advanced wind kit works. Uh, if you have the iPad or AE version, uh, you'll get this built in. If you have the standard edition of Ballistic, it's an in-app purchase that's available for cheap. Um, so that's that's it. Let me know by email if you have any questions. Thanks.